Hal, it's Reed. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having my big goofy ass on. <laughs> well, you're 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 not goofy at all, but you are you are a, a tall man. My my co-host Jay is on as well. I, I have joked about you with that before, and when I've seen you at the at at the rink that uh, you tower over. Like, did you? When was your growth spurt? Like, when did you sort of really become a a, a tall, big human being? Yeah, I, I've been getting that question a lot because my son just turned 13 and he's 5'11 now. He's got a size 14 shoe and uh, everyone's like, what, when did you grow? And I, I think I, I kept, I actually grew, when I went to college, I was like 6'5 and then I grew a couple inches after that. Like, so I, I think I, I just kept going. It was kind of a, a freakish thing. I don't know what it was. I think it was all the, uh, you know, all the old, um, you know, massive quantities of cheap steak that my parents just kept feeding, feeding in my face and gallons of milk just trying to handle my growth spurts that happened every every year. So I, I think it was a gradual thing. Did you ever play forward or were you always a defenseman? Mike Keenan made me play forward. That lasted about a, a, a game and a half. <laughs> and, um, yeah, no, I was never I was never the forward type. I... I I tried to get in on the four check and you know, I got, it's, it's a lot easier than it looks. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Defense was always kind of my thing. All right. Uh, the Oilers, well, I said yesterday in the show, they didn't just stumble out of the gate. They fell and scratched up their knees pretty bad, but they did beat the flyers last night. The Nashville predators who, uh, I predicted to have a very, very good season. They have had their own uh, early season struggles, and uh, you know the goals against certainly don't look very good. What's been going on through the first three games for the Preds, Hal? Yeah, it's a good question. I think they're looking around, going, "Wait, wait what's going on with us?" Um, it, the first two games, uh, they played Dallas at home, and it, it was a good game. Right down to the end, they hit a couple posts. Stamkos had way too many posts in that game. They could have won that game. Uh, they outshot the Stars. Uh, they did the same thing with in Detroit, and, uh, you know, they could have won that game. They had their opportunities. Uh, the game last night against the Kraken at home was disappointing. They're starting a four-game homestand, and uh, they started sluggish, started to pick it up, tied it up, and then going into the third, they just fell apart. They just the – mental mistakes uh, – positioning mistakes they just over pursuing the puck and i think they just got they got set back and and you know cracking our i think they're just a cracking our deep team and they just kept coming and the preds couldn't handle it and so um they talked a lot about losing battles uh andrew burnett has talked about uh they're still playing summer hockey um so i i think they have to dial back in they talk about details and and, you know, playing the system the right way. Um, but I think it's just they, they need a little wake-up call. And hopefully that was it last night so that they can give the, the Oilers a, uh, a good run. But I, I feel like Brunette was cautious of that. He said, if you play summer hockey against the Oilers, you know, mess around and find out. And so they better fix it quick. Well, I, I do think the Oilers will still playing preseason hockey, maybe until the start of the second period last night. So I, I hear what you're saying. Um, look, you, you, you're around the team now, around the league as a broadcaster. You, you, you played well over a thousand games in the league. When a team was in a funk or they, you, or you just knew that you were well below your potential, like, do you just have to be patient and, and go through it? Or do you look for a spark from somebody? I mean, the Oilers bottom six and, and adept defense been fighting last night, I thought gave them a little bit of fire. Like from your experience, what's the quickest route out of it when a team just can't seem to find the win column? Yeah, well, you know what? I, I think I, I went through in Pittsburgh. We had a heck of a team in 2008, made it to the finals, lost to Detroit. And I think the next year we came back in and thought, you know, hey, we're going to get there again. We, we, we got relatively the same lineup and we're going to crank and Crosby and Malkin are going to lead us there. And, and then halfway through the season, I think we were in 11th place before we had a coaching change. 
um, and and kind of got reignited, and and then ended up going to win it. But it was it was uh, kind of a weird feeling starting off that season. We just we weren't sharp. We didn't have that edge. It was just a lackadaisical. And I think you know, in my experience, there's got to be some sort of a bonding moment, and that can come in so many different ways. Whether that's uh, you know on the ice and and a fight or a, or a guy standing up in a locker room and and putting his foot down and, and not just uh, I feel like it, it, there's when we when you lose and everyone kind of stands up and says I'm going to do it and I'm going to yell at my teammates and I'm going to be the guy and it becomes like a, you know everyone goes around the horn and you lose another game and another guy says something and you lose another game another guy says something and I think that you get caught in that trap it has to be generic it has to be authentic and um you know it might be a night out with the boys that you need to just go and, and get away and i think that's still a thing although the game has changed it's not the way it used to be i, I think you need to find a way to get together and bond together and fight for each other i think that's what um you know when you're in a funk there's there's ways to change it but you, you got to find it and sometimes it's hard to do that Hal Gill, uh, Predators a- analyst, joining us. Hal, you got Jay here. Uh, the Oilers and Preds have more than just a slow start in common as uh, head coach Andrew Brunette did shuffle up the lineups on Monday uh, for Nashville. In Edmonton, that, that also happened. Uh, and it, it was kind of it was a polarizing topic. A lot of people were pro the lineup change. A lot of people were, whoa, 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 this is too soon. Uh, how did the changes go over in Nashville? Well, it's, it, it's been happening a lot, uh, you know, like the, the problem is you have the line with O'Reilly, Forsberg and Nyquist, which is a great line for the Preds last year, just really dragged them along. So you go out and you don't want to change it up when you sign uh, Stamkos and Marcia. So, and so they started with Novak there. They, then they put uh, Sissons in between those guys. And now that they have Cole Smith playing on the wing and Stamkos, moved to center. They're trying everything. Jankowski's played up with them. Um, and, you know, they have spurts of being great and, okay, they look good. That's that's going to be it. And then it, it peters off. And I think there's an adjustment period. Bruno has a different system. Um, you know, he wants to play faster. He wants to, you know, the forwards to keep their speed and move and, and move the puck quickly. He wants a D to get the puck up quicker than, than normal. Um, so there's a lot of things that they're learning. And so they've been on the same line. Those two guys have been on the same line and it just hasn't clicked. So I think he's going to keep shuffling the deck and maybe split those guys up. And maybe, you know, you learn something from going on a fourth line, you know, like if you have a fourth line guy who plays the right way, maybe he doesn't have the skill set, but plays the right way. Maybe, you know, they learn by just being around them. Uh, but I, you know, the, the hard part, and I think Bruno has touched on it, is is that you know when no one's playing well and no one's really playing the system the way it's supposed to be played? How are Stamkos and Marcheso supposed to look at how they're playing? <laughs> like you, the, the best way to learn. And I always said it like I need to see the plays happen in order to like kind of mimic it. A coach can tell you what to do, but until you actually see it and live it, then you don't get it. Once you get it, then you understand that's the way the right way you want to play. Uh, but they're shuffling the lines and trying to find out how they can get everyone onto the same page. And it's, it's just taken a bit of time. And I think that's kind of the summer hockey mentality that is, is, is kind of holding them back from finding their true identity. Now I, I got to ask you here, Nashville, uh, the predators have, have hosted a fishing tournament that they do in September leading up to the, to the season. And it looks like, it looks like a great event. I, yeah. I know you're a big part of that. Uh, I know that fishing is a hobby that that you uh, that you enjoy, uh, but have you ever been able to come away with the win at this tournament, Hal? I have not. I'm. Uh, you know what? I thought there was no fish in the in the lake this year, and like it's and for those that don't know a bass tournament, it, it's something like you never seen. It, you're you're up before the sun, and you're sitting on a on a boat and there's, you know, 45 boats around you. And then all of a sudden someone comes up and says, 
on the on the megaphone says boat one, and all of a sudden these these, these animals drive like maniacs and they take off at 70 miles an hour ripping across the lake and then boat two and three four and they just keep popping off and it's mayhem and it's a an absolute rush and then you sit there and like if you're me you sit there and not catch fish for four to six hours and it's pretty disappointing uh but i will say the pro fishermen that come in and do this tournament every time we go back they pull out a bag of full of five pound fish and i'm like where, where did they get these bass from because <laughs> they sure weren't in the lake that i was fishing in but uh it's a lot of fun i, I enjoy that i gotta i gotta get on the board though i gotta get something i save a little respect for myself 